So by now we all know that TSMC is rumored to be giving their partner, AMD, exclusive dedicated access to an enhanced version of the 5 nanometer node. And for those who don't know what enhanced means, this version should be a full 7 to 15 percent better than their standard 5 nanometer. Specifically, I think this will be used for Epic, giving it 15% more efficiency than it would have otherwise, Epic Zen 4, and I also think they may use it for a 7% clock speed advantage for their top graphics cards over NVIDIA. This is a very real advantage. Oftentimes, Halo products beat their competition only by 10 to 15%, so this shouldn't be underestimated in how important it is. At the same time, I saw this news as very straight forward and so i didn't do very much with this information i mean we already know tsmc has a seven nanometer enhanced that amd is even being able to use for the consoles so yeah i mean cool another advantage for amd and one that others can't seem to buy away from them but what else is there really to say about this However, in the last Broken Silicon episode, a patron sent a reader mail that highlighted something I may have overlooked, a 20,000 wafer per month agreement AMD would have with TSMC on 5 nanometer when it starts production. And that production of 5 nanometers is expected to start mid this year, so very, very soon. And analyzing what AMD might be making on that and the implications of the ramp up over the next year led me down a rabbit hole. So let's start looking at some of these details. Now, the first thing to get out of the way is that I believe this is technically a rumor, although everyone seems to be sure it's true that TSMC is giving AMD this enhanced N7P process. And based on what is public, this will be in volume production at the start of 2021. So let's just assume January, but you never know the exact month. And so we really don't know the exact month that AMD is required to buy 20,000 300 millimeter wafers per month but let's just say it's january and then let's also assume that a zen 4 chiplet will take up a little bit less room than a zen 2 or zen 3 chiplet right it's on 5 nanometer it will be shrunk but it will also have more l2 cache so it's not going to be like half as big or anything i'm just going to assume through some rough math i did that i'm not going to show that it's like 63 millimeters squared for a Zen 4 chiplet. I think that's a reasonable thing to expect if the L2 cache is doubled and then it gets a die shrink the size Radeon 7 got over Vega 64. And then let's also assume that Zen 4 will have 50% more cores. I'm just going to assume for this math that Zen 4 will have these chiplets be a little smaller, and so they'll be able to add more chiplets, but each chiplet is still eight cores. And again, it doesn't really matter. This is about rough density estimates per wafer. Anyways, the point is this. If I go to a silicon die calculator, I can see that they might make 10 38 dies per wafer, and that's to over 20 million Zen 4 chiplets per month. And assuming that it can fit more of those chiplets than Zen 2 did, well... We know that AMD is then making up to 1.7 million Zen 4 Epic chips per month. Now, notice I said up to. Yields on 5 nanometer aren't perfect, although I do believe they are above 80% already. So let's just say 85% and get just shy of 1.5 million Epic chips per month. Now, of course, I know AMD won't just be using 5 nanometer for Zen 4 Epic. I know they will have many other products produced on this node, but I'm doing this for an apples to apples comparison. So just bear with me a little longer. That apples to apples comparison is how many Epic chips is AMD able to make on 7 nanometer now versus how many they're about to be required to make on 5 nanometer. And on a 7 nanometer wafer, since it's a bigger chiplet due to a less dense node, they can fit 877 chiplets per wafer. And we know that AMD has just become TSMC's biggest customer on 7 nanometer with 30,000 wafers per month. So yeah, that's quite a lot of 7 nanometer Zen 2 chiplets per month. And that gives you, well, yeah, a lot more Zen 2 Epic chips per month than I am estimating they could make with Zen 4 on 5 nanometer. It's about double. And well, at first glance, this may paint TSMC's 5 nanometer as off to a rocky start compared to its 7 nanometer sister. You have to remember that TSMC's 7 nanometer node is way more mature now than it was when Zen 2 first started to be produced. Back then, if we remember, 877 chiplets 
per wafer at most, and then assume that because AMD's doubled its relative orders, let's just say it had 11% of the wafers being produced per month in early 2019, and then we can, by the only legitimate source I can find, estimate they were 40,000 wafers per month in early 2019 at 70% yield rates, we find that Zen 2 may have started production with about a fourth of the output of what it sounds like AMD is committed to producing on 5 nanometer by early to mid-2021. Now, I know I just threw a bunch of numbers at you quickly, so I want to take a break and let you have a reward of watching my brother's dog ride around while I summarize everything I just said. My point is this. Yes, AMD is buying up more 7 nanometer capacity right now, but they have a lot of obligations as they become a market leader. The fact of the matter is, even if 5 nanometer is half the chip output in an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, I use Epic Zen 4 versus Epic Zen 2, even in an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, 5 nanometer seems like it will ramp much faster than 7 nanometer did. And so I guess this just gets me to one of my main points already. A lot of people are calling Zen 4 2021 slash 2022, and I wouldn't bet money that Zen 4 will have no problems and will definitely get out in 2021. But based on these recent leaks... Zen 4 looks like very much so a 2021 product. But what else would they be producing with Zen 4? I mean, we know they're going to use Zen 4 for the Frontier supercomputer that will hit 1.5 exaflops of computing with a ratio of 4 GPUs to 1 CPU. What GPU? Hmm... What GPU would go in the Frontier? Well, of course, Instinct graphics cards, and ones that have been showing up more and more in leaks recently. Of course, I am talking about Arcturus. Now, this product I expect to be the first cDNA architecture to debut, and all the way in July of 2019, I actually hypothesized that we shouldn't assume it's on 7 nanometer. I think it would make a lot of sense to put it on EUV 6 nanometer or 7 nanometer, because why not? Vega was first to 7 nanometer for AMD, and why not make Vega first to an EUV process as well? And unlike with 7 nanometer, 5 nanometer debuted with both the low power and high performance versions of 5 nanometer hitting risk production at the same time. Usually it's just the low power one first. But then again, AMD has already publicly said that cDNA1 will not be 5 nanometer. At least that's what they're saying publicly. So I think it would be pretty crazy to assume that Frontier will be using a 5 nanometer cDNA if it's Arcturus. But then I got thinking... Why should we assume Frontier will use Arcturus? I mean, what we know is that it's going to have to be 1.5 exaflops. So is there a way we could reverse engineer the math to tell us what GPU it is using? Well, I think we can. But before we do that, I want you guys to do me a favor and keep some numbers in the back of your head. If you look at the recent Arcturus leaks that showed up on Tech Power Up, the board they looked at had a clock speed just above 870 megahertz. And in fact, the original BIOS they received with the full 128 compute units detailed a top boost clock of 1,334 megahertz. So for now, we should somewhat assume that's the highest boost clock a 7 nanometer family Arcturus should be able to hit. And then if we go over to the Frontier supercomputer, Reactor Field on Twitter pointed out something really interesting. The instinct cards should be pretty powerful. Around 30 teraflops. Well, okay, let me check your math. We know Frontier has 100 cabinets, and then in each cabinet, there's 64 blades, and then in each blade, there's eight graphics cards. Now, the ratio is four graphics cards to every CPU, so there should be two CPUs as well. Okay, so let's assume 4.2 teraflops per CPU. I get this from the top ROM processor. That's a 280-watt processor. So it's probably going to not be a 280-watt Zen 3 that they use, and... 
I'm basically assuming that a 180 watt Zen 3, since it's the same core count, will perform like a 280 watt Rome. And it's just a proxy, it doesn't need to be exact. Okay, so then let's assume that the top boost clock we know for Arcturus times its stream processors for teraflops was 22 teraflops. Well, that's not 1.5 people. Huh. Okay. Well, I guess we do know that they said it's not actually going to use Milan, that it will use some new custom CPU. Now, that could be a Zen 3 Plus that's been referenced before on 5 nanometer, hopefully with 4-way SMT. I don't know. Or perhaps it's Zen 4. But then I guess let's just go back to this and assume it has double the performance of the top 280 watt Rome processor. This is pretty much the most I expect. It's still not 1.5 exaflops. Heck, if I even almost double it again, yeah, no, that's not good enough. No, it isn't. So what do we need to get this to? Huh. Wow. That's a pretty high clock speed for 8,000 cores on 7 nanometer. So I think that was a valid point. It has to be not 30 teraflops, but considering how much of the compute is coming from GPUs in Frontier, it has to be not that much less. And I guess here's what I will say. Maybe. Maybe Arcturus on 7 nanometer EUV or uh, N6 can get to 1.7. I would say it's just barely plausible, but more than likely, I think that's a 5 nanometer instinct card they plan on using. And if we go back to looking at that roadmap, one could make the argument that it's showing cDNA2 will be out before 2022 begins. We have been getting Arcturus leaks since early 2019, and now we're almost to mid-2020. It would make a ton of sense to me if Arcturus was unveiled within a couple of months and then launched later this year. And then just like before, just like how Lisa Sue called the MI60, Radeon 7, that 7 nanometer Vega die, a pipe cleaner for 7 nanometer, why not do that again? Why not get Arcturus out with all of these cores this year and then die shrink it to 5 nanometer and start ramping up production sooner than people think? And... Why not combine that with some type of 5 nanometer Zen 3 Plus or Zen 4? After all, AMD has leapfrogging design teams. Zen 3 was design complete late last year, and I see no reason why Zen 4 can't be design complete this year and launched, you know, 14 months later. And for those wondering why AMD would also be buying up so much 7 nanometer capacity if they're planning to ramp 5 so quickly, it's because Zen 4 will use a 7 nanometer IO die. And they also need to supply tens of millions of consoles a year on 7 nanometer. I wouldn't expect some type of, you know, 5 nanometer die shrink of the next gen consoles until 2022. And so am I 100% sure? that Zen 4 will be launching at the end of 2021. Well, I guess I wouldn't bet any money on that, especially with all of the chaos going on in the world right now. But, you know, I think we're going to get a pretty decent indication this year if we should be optimistic for AMD next year. And that's looking at the launch of Zen 3. If Zen 3 actually does manage to come out near the end of quarter 3 this year in the midst of a pandemic, that should give us confidence that AMD is not slowing down at all and we should take them at their word for a fourth time in a row that they will be launching products when they say they will be. And all of this is just starting to feel like deja vu to me. About this time last year, I was talking about Zen 3 a lot and how people needed to stop doubting that it will come out in under two years after Zen 2. And it looks like I'm going to have to start talking like that about Zen 4. Except this time it seems like AMD's weapons are even sharper than before. And that's because TSMC is legitimately a partner of AMD. They clearly, based on giving them this 5 nanometer enhanced node, have a vested interest in bolstering AMD as much as possible before Intel can respond. And it's pretty straightforward as to why. Intel doesn't buy TSMC's nodes, at least not yet. And even if they started to, they would rather have a much more rich bidder bidding against them in AMD. They are partners, 
And this is the war on Intel. And well, this war will be fought with many different products. Some of them have to be on five nanometers soon. And I've already given you two examples of what those products could be. Just like Zen 2 followed after Zen 1, right when people said it would at a high performance level that everyone was doubting, I think the same thing's going to happen with Zen 3 and Zen 4. I really don't see TSMC's backing of AMD slowing down anytime soon. That backing will also benefit their graphics cards. And that's bad news for NVIDIA. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. A quick reminder that according to YouTube, an overwhelming majority of you viewers recently are not subscribed to my channel. So please remember to subscribe and ring the bell button so you can see all of these other videos coming out from me soon. And of course, thank you for watching.